how do you, as someone that's been in the NFT space for two years, how do you keep up and how do you stay in that longevity <laughs> yeah. piece? It's definitely gotten harder. Uh, it used, I mean, two years ago, uh, you know, you, we were talking about easy before this. Everybody used to just go into this whip meetup once a week and they'd be like, here's the five projects coming out this week in the NFT space. And you'd be like, okay, I have a full grasp of everything that's happening. Now it's like <laughs> 50 projects a day. It's really hard to sort through the good and the bad. And a lot of them will just be completely off your radar until it's too late. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's having your finger on the pulse in terms of being in these discords, being on Twitter, being aware of all this stuff. Cause otherwise there's, there's no centralized way to learn about everything. You just have to be hyper active in all these places. Um, and yeah, that idea of that, like constant scrolling, I mean, that kind of ties into what a lot of my art is, which is taking these kind of colorful, fun ideas and using that to talk about kind of deeper, darker issues in the space, whether it's, yeah, uh, burnout or uh, imposter syndrome or any of these other things. I love kind of masking those kind of more serious topics with kind of like candy coated fun visuals because it's easier to bring mm. people in that way. And so, yeah, I really, that, that one was a fun one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm constantly scrolling Twitter all the time. It's part of the job. Yeah. And you mentioned the other part of that job is marketing. And again, a part of the, we had so much combo pre episode that I had to tell us to like stop so that we could have it live. You mentioned that marketing's gotten harder yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, it, at, between the time that you started to just be an individual to now working on multiple different projects that are large scale, how has that changed? In marketing? Well, I think, you know, as the space has evolved, marketing has become, it's, it's kind of mimicked the entertainment world where, uh, you know, two years ago, I could just make, an, I was just making a piece of art, putting on super rare. And I'd be like, here's my piece of art. If you want to, if anybody wants to bid on it, it's available. Um, now, and I learned that that was not the right way to do it because then most people didn't know about it until it was too late, which we were just kind of talking about. Uh, now it's a whole hype cycle of, I'm going to make something. I'm, you know, say, say I have a super rare piece. Now, now I have to say, okay, I'm going to have this piece. It's going to come out in a week. And then you go, okay, two days later, here's a teaser of it, or, you know, here's the making of it. And then you have to kind of do this whole press junket for each release. And that kind of, um, it's the same for like Nifty Gateway or any of these other things. You have to kind of build this cycle of understanding around what you're making so you can effectively tell people about it. That didn't used to be as strong, but now it's really important to kind of cut through the, the chaos of the feeds. Um, and then in the same way, a lot of what I do now, I'm working with, brands or platforms or collaborations and they have that same system of their own and you have to kind of work within their marketing systems as well and so you, you have to be much more mm. careful and i think i was telling you before the show there's like a whole bunch of things i'm working on i just can't even talk about because uh you know they have their own systems i have to work within within the marketing of it <laughs> 